Next thing that we want to work on is sending emails in our website. I will be showing you two ways to send emails. First one is using your generic Gmail account. Because default approach is to use an SMTP client and send emails. So let's get started with that. Let me close all the tabs here. And if you remember inside the utility project, we implemented a generic email sender. This has a send email async method where we are not doing anything right now. We want to send emails inside this because we have the email subject and the HTML message. So inside the utility project, we will have to manage NuGet packages. And we need two NuGet packages. First one is mail kit. Let's install that one. And next one is mime kit. So let me install that one as well. And perfect. Let's go back to our email sender. This will be pretty straightforward. We will create a variable email to send and this will be a new mime message. We will press control dot and add the using statement there. Next we have to configure this email to send and we can add properties there like the from email address. So here we will add a new mailbox address dot parse and we will write our email address. So let me say hello at dot net dot com here. That will be what the from email address will look like. Then next we have the to email address and that we already have inside the string email. After that we need to configure the subject and body. So dot subject we have the subject and email to send dot body is equal to we will create new text part here and in there we have the mime kit options so mime kit dot text dot the format that we want is html so text format dot html we will configure that and we can provide the text here which is inside html message so that way in future if you want to use a custom template or something fancy you can use that right here so this were the properties to configure the email that we need to send. Then right here we will actually send the email using SMTP client. So we will add a using statement. We'll say variable email client is equal to new SMTP client. For that we will have to add the using statement which is mailkit.net.smtp. If you use the other using statement which is system.net.mail then it will not work. So be careful with that. Inside there we will configure our email client. So email client dot connect and here we will connect to our Gmail account. This connect method will not be available if you add the incorrect using statement on the line above. If you are using any SMTP, they have their SMTP server like Google has smtp.gmail.com and then we need the port number default one with Google is 587 if you are using any other email provider they will always give you their SMTP server and port number so you can populate that here and then we can add the security here mailkit.security.securesocketoptions.tls with that we will be able to connect to our server then right now we are only establishing the connection to the SMTP server. We need to enter our username and password. We will have to enter our username and password. So we will say email client.authenticate. We will write our email and then the password. So you will have to write your Gmail password right here. After that on email client, you will call the send method and that will actually send the email so we have to give the email to send in parameters. Once that is done, it is always good idea to disconnect your email client. We will set that to be true. We have the using statement, so that should be okay. Once we complete all of this, we can return task.completedTask. So with that, our email sender looks great. 
Let's test this in the next video. Now we want to test our email address. If we go to our areas, inside there we have the identity and let's examine the register. You can see we have the email sender that we are getting with the help of dependency injection. So we get an implementation of this class. We scroll down to the on post here and after the user has been created here, if that is successful, we are by default sending an email to confirm their email address. If you want to send an email after the order has been placed, you can add an order confirmation email as well. But first, let's test this one. So let me add a debugging point here. Let me save everything and run the application. Let's go to register here. We will register as an individual user. And right now I'm only using a fake account because this time it should fail. But I want to show you what happens. Before I hit the register, if we go back, we have our breakpoint. Let me also add a breakpoint in register page model and hit the register button. Perfect, we hit our first breakpoint. Let's debug here. Let me press F11 to go inside. We hit our breakpoint. Let's examine and make sure everything goes well here. It is able to connect, but when we try to authenticate, we will run into an error message. We see the error username and password are not accepted. That is not the actual reason. My credentials are valid. But what happens is by default, the less secure apps are blocked with Google. So if you go to Google here, click on your account, and if you click manage Google account, inside the security, you will have less secure apps. You will have to turn it on. Once you do that, let's go back and register one more time. This time I will use the correct email because I should receive an email address. So let's hit the register button. We hit our breakpoint. Let's continue. And that worked. Let me go to my Gmail and see if I received an email. And perfect. I received an email to confirm my account. If I click here, you will notice it redirects us to the application and email has been confirmed. Let's go to our SQL database. And let me select the ASP.NET users here. The account that I created, you can see the email is confirmed for that account. So all of this is built in with identity. We just had to implement the send email functionality. Now before I end this video, when we go to submit an order, which will be inside the area customer, we have the order confirmation in card controller. So once the order has been confirmed, let's also send an email. How to do that real quick? We will have to inject the email sender in dependency injection. So let me inject that. We will have the email sender. After that, we will go to the confirmation method, order confirmation. Once the email is sent here, we can call the email sender dot the send email async. We need to provide three properties here, email, subject, and HTML message. If you want, you can go fancy here and load HTML templates but I will just keep things super simple. To get the email, we have that inside order header dot application user dot email. When we are retrieving the order header, let's make sure we include that property. Application user, perfect. Next, what we want is the subject. Let's say new order bulky book. And we have the HTML message here. We can just say in a paragraph, new order created. Now, of course, you can be fancy and pass the order ID and all the other details, but I'm just keeping things super simple. I want to make sure the email is working and then you can do the configurations as per your business requirement. So let's run the application and test that. We will log in with the account that has the valid email address. Let me do that. And let me place an order. OK, 
let's set the pay button and it should send an email when we go to the order confirmation we hit our breakpoint for the email async let's check our email again and perfect we have the new order created right here so you can see how easy it was to configure the email services in our existing application let's continue in the next video right now we are using the smtp server to send email but there are many third-party tools that are available with sending emails one of the most common one is sendgrid so in this video let me show you how you can send emails with sendgrid but before you move forward let me be clear about one thing here if you are using gmail yahoo or hotmail sendgrid will not work it will only work with the domain emails like hello at .netmastery.com, something with your domain. As long as you have a domain email, only then SendGrid will work. So let me sign in here. I already have an account. You can sign up for an account here and they have free tier for email. Once you are signed in, if you go to settings here, you will first have to create a sender authentication. Here you will have to verify a single sender identity where you will enter the email address that you want to verify and then on your domain email you will receive an email to verify that email address once that is done then your identity will be verified only after that you will be able to send emails so once the identity is verified you will go to api keys here and we will create an api key i will call this bulky create and view i will copy this let me go back and we need to add that in appsettings.json. So let me scroll down, appsettings.json. I will create a new section here, which will be send grid. And here we will give it a key name of secret key value. Let me paste that. That looks good. Inside our email sender, we need to extract that value we will be using the i configuration using dependency injection let me create a string variable to hold the key and we need to get the i configuration using dependency injection so we will call that underscore config we can populate our send grid secret using underscore config dot we have the get value here we want to get value which is of type string so here we need to pass the route inside our app settings file so if i open that i have the send grid section i will paste that inside send grid section i have a key with the name of secret key we want that value so it will retrieve that value and assign that to our send grid secret then we need to configure sending email we do not need this anymore so we will comment this out we want to implement the send grid now we will have to include the NuGet package for that, but we can directly say variable client is equal to new send grid client. If you press control dot here, it will ask you to install the NuGet package for send grid. Let's install that directly here, and we need to pass the send grid client option. The only thing that we have to pass here is the send grid secret key. The next property that we have to configure is the from email address. So we will say variable from is equal to new email address, write the email address, and we can give that a name. The two email address, we already have that in the string here, so we can use that. And final thing is the message. So message is equal to on mail helper. We have different methods. You can create a single email you can create it from a template. You can create an email to send to multiple recipients and so on. We want to create a single email. So we create that and we have to write from email address to email address and so on. So from is inside the variable from. We have two that is configured. Subject we have that in the parameter and message is HTML message. Pretty straightforward. We forgot to give empty for the plain text content. That looks good. Finally, on client, we will just call the method 
send email async with our message that will send the email and return back all the integration is already done with SendGrid. We can remove our debugging point from both of the methods here and let's run the application using the same email that we have. We can try to place a new order. Let me open that Gmail account and let me delete the old emails. Let's place the order again. And let me hit the pay button. Perfect, that is done. Let's go back. This time the email goes inside the spam, but we get that. We get our new email and you can see it is sent via sendgrid.net. So with that, emails are working perfectly with SendGrid. The only thing you should remember is SendGrid will only work if you are using domain emails. So if you are using Gmail or Yahoo to test it, do not try using SendGrid.